favorite spot, your own little corner of the universe where you are the ruler. Nothing can bother you here. Except for that blasted wireless router at the other end of the building that doesn't quite reach your little kingdom. The last time we looked into why this happens, and I also showed you how to do a wireless map to show you the dead zones in your area. So this time, let's take a look at how you can take the power into your own hands and supercharge your wimpy little router. One super cheap method is to reflect the Wi-Fi signals to a specific area. Now there's three popular home remedies that I'd like to test for achieving this. The soda can, the chip can, and the colander method. For the colander, you simply position the dish behind or around your Wi-Fi antenna, pointing it in the direction of your target. For the chip can, also known as the cantenna, you want to cut a hole in the middle of the bottom and place it over your antenna, pointing the top opening towards your target. And for the soda can, making sure you're using all possible safety precautions, cut the bottom off of the can and cut down the side until you've reached the top of the can. Then cut around the top, leaving about a half inch of connected aluminum. Then you can splay out the sides almost like wings and then place the antenna through the can opening. All right, we've got our three signal boosters, so let's test them out. First, we need a baseline reading of Wi-Fi range. So setting up the router without any signal boosters, from a distance of 30 yards away, the base signal is negative 91 dBm. So first, let's test out the can. After attaching it and walking 30 yards away, the signal jumped from negative 91 to negative 83 dBm. Next up, the colander. After affixing it to the antenna, the signal improves slightly to negative 81 dBm. Now time for the cantenna. The secret of the cantenna is that it's highly directionalized, so you have to point it directly at the target that you want to send the signal to. When I did that, the dBm increased to negative 77. Outside of the target, however, it dropped to negative 87 dBm. Now, keep in mind that this is in no way an exhaustive scientific study. This is just the results I gathered after only one test, so your results may vary. Well, these are good solutions for routers with antennas, but what about routers without antennas? Is there any way to improve them? Yes, and it goes by the name of DDWRT. It's basically an open source operating system for your router that allows you to tweak it for performance. So let's install it. The first thing that you want to do is check to see if your router is supported. And if it is, count your blessings and follow the steps to install the DDWRT firmware on it. Once installed, you'll have to create a new username and password, and then you can start tweaking it. Now, glancing at this Wi-Fi analyzer report of the Wi-Fi in my area, you'll notice that there are several arches grouped together. Looking at the bottom numbers, this means that they are all sharing the same channel. The preferred channels for Wi-Fi are 1, 6, and 11. And while you can use almost any supported channel, these are the ones that have the best throughput. So if you go to wireless basic settings, you can change to a channel with the least amount of conflicting signals. Another tweak would be to boost the power to the router. Going to wireless advanced settings, you'll see a TX power option. Cranking this up will provide more power to your router, which will boost the antenna strength. Be careful though, because the more power also means the more heat and the more potential to fry your router. 100 seems to be a safe adjustment that most routers are okay with. So hopefully with one or several of these tweaks combined, your happy place can now be even happier. If you want even more ways to boost your Wi-Fi, over on Tinkernut Labs, I'll be showing how to make a wireless repeater and a wireless bridge using DDWRT. What topic would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your ideas at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch the last video, and if you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial, and we're we'll go to tinkernut.com.